What's up guys, Grimex V here. In today's video, we'll be covering the V Rising and Castlevania crossover and some exciting 1.0 information you might have missed. Let's dive in. For those unaware, SLS hinted at this with a post on X Monday of March 25th before revealing the teaser trailer on Tuesday of March 26th. And guys, I've got to say the implications for this one are pretty exciting. For those unfamiliar with the Castlevania franchise, don't feel too bad. I'm not that well versed either, but here's the relevant info I've found so you don't have to. Castlevania is a console title owned by Konami that was first released back in 1986 on the FDS before seeing a North America release in 1987 on Nintendo. Since its release, it's remained pretty relevant in the genre with several editions and spin-offs over the years, including an animated Netflix series that launched back in 2017. From SLS's post and teaser trailer, it looks like a crossover into V Rising will be coming in the form of a new vampire hunter named Simon Belmont. Here's a little bit of his background. In the Castlevania series, Simon is the main protagonist to appear in the original game, and he continues to make an appearance in several of the other titles as well, such as Vampire Hunter, Haunted Castle, and Castlevania Harmony of Despair. The TLDR of his character is that he's a badass whip wooding vampire hunter who's the heir to the Belmont clan, and he sort Sort of looks like a mix between Conan the Barbarian and Indiana Jones. Oh yeah, and he actually kills Dracula in the main series as well. Kind of crazy, right? If you've been keeping up with news on 1.0, you'll know that Dracula has been confirmed to be a part of the upcoming full release. So the implications here lead to some pretty interesting speculation, but more on this later. Now, if you guys just saw the post on Discord or on X, you might not be aware that there was also a blog released giving us more detail on this. Here's what was said. In collaboration with Konami Digital Entertainment, Stunlock Studios proudly presents Legacy of Castlevania. The mighty hero of the Belmont clan, Simon Belmont, is here to challenge all of vampire kind, wielding his legendary vampire killer and an infamous arsenal of holy weaponry. No Night Stalker will be saved from his righteous crusade through Vardaran. Defeat him and unlock the secrets of a brand new weapon, the Whip, adapting new combat abilities that embody the grace and precision of the deadly vampire hunter. Now, before this announcement, I would have never thought we were getting a whip added to a game about vampires, but after doing all the research into the Gaslevania series, it kind of seems like it'd be blasphemy not to. Now I did my best to try to find some gameplay footage of Simon in hopes to get some insight on what the new whip abilities might be, but honestly from what I found, Simon actually seems to primarily use sub weapons whenever he's fighting anything. Don't get me wrong, he does use the whip for auto attacks, but outside of that he's just pulling enemies closer. So when it comes to the new abilities, I couldn't really find anything concrete that seemed plausible but hopefully someone more familiar with the franchise can share their thoughts in the comments below. Next in the blog, SLS actually reveals that they're releasing DLC and said this. All vampires will be able to face the Belmont Air to test their skills in battle, but you will also have additional opportunities to fully immerse yourself in the spirit of Castlevania. The Legacy of Castlevania Premium Pack Cosmetic DLC will be available to purchase, allowing players to construct their own castles inspired by our adoration for the classic Castlevania aesthetic. Craft spellbinding castle decor, enjoy character customization options inspired by legendary Castlevania characters, and ride the new spooky skeletal mount. Set the tone with the symphony of Castlevania music in your castle with two classic themes reimagined by V-Rising composer Alexandria Migova. It's time to embark on a journey into darkness as V-Rising arrives in its full glory on May 8th with the free content of Legacy of Castlevania and the purchasable cosmetic DLC. More of details to be revealed soon. Looking at the picture here, they actually showcase an awesome silver and blue coffin with gold and red accents. Behind this, we can also see what appears to be a winged adorned throne, a new statue and either new wallpaper or windows behind that. Now as exciting as that is, having never seen it firsthand, I was still pretty curious about the Castlevania aesthetic. So I hopped into Google. And guys, I've got to say it all looks pretty awesome. I don't know about you, but whenever I play a no wipe server, I always make a point to decorate my castle in a sort of dark and brooding theme. And these seem to fit right up that alley. The castle design themselves seem to give off an eerie, grungy sort of vibe with lots of interesting archways and overhangs. If we look back at the teasers for the new in-game zone, it looks like a lot of those structures are actually taking after that theme. So 
for me, Curse Forest has always been my go-to zone of choice when it comes to decorating a dark castle, but seeing these actually has me thinking the new zone might just change that. Speaking of the new zone, I also wanted to share something I'm personally speculating with you guys. While digging into Simon Belmont, I discovered this interesting fact about his story. As I mentioned earlier, in the Castlevania story, he actually kills Count Dracula. However, from what I found, it doesn't seem like it's a permanent fix. In his final moments, Dracula actually places a curse on not only Simon, but also all of Transylvania. Lore-wise, it's hinted that Dracula will return when his skinless hand is raised from the grave, but in the game, to break the curse, Simon is forced to gather and stake Dracula's remains before returning them to his castle, where he then has to slay him once more. Now, I could be wrong, but knowing all that gives me a hunch that SLS might be using at least part of this as the framework for the events that'll recharge the shards. And again, I could be wrong there, but to me it just seems like a bit too much of a coincidence. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And that's it for today's video, guys. Huge thank you to everyone that has subbed up to the channel. We pretty much blasted past 100 and are now actually inching our way closer to 200, which is crazy. But as always, thank you so much for watching. This is GrimXV, signing off.